All right, so we've captured some items, and now the natural next step would be to process them. In other words, assign meaning to them. What are they? Are they tasks? Are they complete projects, items we may be waiting for, or anything else, reference maybe? Well, before we can do any of that, we first need to set up the infrastructure within the to-do system to support that. In other words, we have to organize our to-do system first. Follow me along here as we go to the projects section. So I've already created a couple of projects, quote unquote. So this is the name of the Todoist taxonomy, which I don't think is the best name for it. I would have rather had that they just name it lists because that's what it is. Projects are lists and they can contain tasks, but also other items depending on what meaning you assign to them. So that is why you can also see that under the projects taxonomy, the first list that we're going to create is the my projects list. Now this may sound confusing at first, but just bear with me. It will all make sense down the road. The next list you'll want to create is a reminders list, an agendas list, not now, routines, reference, areas of focus, goals, vision, and purpose. We're going to define what these lists mean exactly later on. For now, it's just important that you have those within your system. What I like to do, spice them up a little bit by adding a relevant emoji to it. These are supported by Todoist, so you can just add those after the name of the individual list. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to set up a couple of labels, and we're gonna set up more later on, but for now, these are the most important. You're gonna to wanna to create a label named Next, a label named Waiting, and a couple of labels for various time distinctions. And as you can see, I'm color coding these, and this will be even more important once we have more labels later on. I choose to give the next label a green color because that's you know, a signal for you know, green light, let's go. And we will assign this label to tasks that we can actually perform now. Waiting for is actually kind of a red light because we cannot progress until we receive what we're waiting for. And the time, I just chose orange because that's what I've always gone with. You can choose any color you like. You can also choose any time distinctions you like. Personally, I like to divide up my tasks into these brackets of time because they help me while I'm working to distinguish and decide and prioritize most of all, what am I able to do with the time that I've got left? So again, these are not all the labels that we'll create, but for now, this is how we will start organizing our system. Very importantly, to be able to do this, you will need the pro version of Todoist. So Whereas in the first two lessons, we were fine with the free version, because there's a limit of just five lists of five projects, you're gonna need to upgrade. However, if you use the link in uh, the description or scan the QR code that's gonna appear on the screen right now, you can get a good deal and I get a little commission for it. I'm not gonna hide that fact, it's just what it is. And it is a way you can you know, support me and say thank you for this course if it's helped you so far. Now that we've created our lists, we're going to take a bit of a deeper look at the first five lists here, which are the projects list, reminders, agendas, not now, and routines. The reason for this is that these are lists that you'll probably be active in at least once a week and some of them multiple times per day even, such as your projects list. So let's take a look at how we organize those uh, at a more detailed level. A cool thing about Todoist is that it allows you to create nested lists. In other words, as you can see here, I was able to expand my projects into these three sub lists here, which I've named standalone items. And this is a list where you will add any task that achieves the desired outcome on its own. In other words, there are not multiple tasks required to get there. However, for those outcomes that do require multiple tasks, you'll want to set up actual projects. And those you can also group under here and give them a name. Obviously the title of the task would be the desired outcome of the task. Before we get into that though, there are two types of projects mostly. For one, you have a parallel project. And you can see an example of that. These are projects whose actions can be performed at any time. They don't depend on each other. That is different for a sequential project. And as you can see here, 
we are using not the list view, but the board view, which you can select from the right hand side here. And you can either view it as a list, but in this case, we're viewing it as a board, which allows us to look at it more from left to right, right? As a pipeline where tasks are put into a certain stage or phase, as I called it here. But you can name these stages anything you want. And that's really cool and powerful about to do is in that it's so flexible to meet your needs for whatever specific projects you've got. Now, personally, I find setting up projects, you know, thinking through what are the required actions and in which phase are they? What are the dependencies, in other words? I find it pretty cumbersome. So what I like to do is actually have a template available. And that's exactly what I've done here. So you can actually download these projects and import them directly into your to-do system by following the link in the description, downloading the file, and then selecting here, import from templates. Clicking this will allow you to select the file you've downloaded and it will show up as such. So all you have to do is give the specific phases and actions names, indicating what they're for, instead of starting from scratch. The second list is reminders. Now this is one that many people interpret a bit differently. My personal interpretation is that reminders are there to show you things that you may need to see only at that time uh, or things that you may need to make a decision on, on whether to action on it or not. So they're different from tasks in that tasks are already telling you this is what needs to be done perhaps at this time, but that decision has already been made. So here's how I use reminders. And this is a simplistic view. Again, you could opt for also using the board view here and splitting it up into various categories. Personally, for me, the list view here is sufficient. An example of how you could use it is a reservation confirmation. So what if you have a fancy restaurant that you need to uh, show your reservation when you arrive? So here you can add the PDF file in an attachment, for example, or the forwarded email and it will show it to you when you decide it's to do so by selecting the date for the quote unquote task. But also in addition, you can add an extra reminder under reminders. And whether or not this is useful will depend on how you prefer your notifications, for example. So you could set up your notifications to already indicate when a task is, is due. Now, obviously this is not a task to action on, but you can still you know, mark it complete when you no longer need it. But if you decide not to do that, then having the extra reminder here is super useful. Another example of the way to use reminders, as I indicated before, is to use it for triggering you to make a decision on something. Now, let's say you have a yearly health insurance plan that you can renew only in December. An example question you could ask yourself here in reminders is change health insurance, question mark, 15 of December. Now, if the answer is yes, then you will want to take that reminder and turn it into a separate project where you research the options, etc. But if the answer is no, all you have to do is just decide that, mark it complete, and there's no further action needed. That's why, in my opinion, it's kind of different from a task and why it lives in the reminders list instead. So next up, we move to the agendas list, which is the basically talking points that you may have with others when you see them. You will not see your spouse 24 seven, so you could have a list for your spouse. And then when you see her or him, you can consult with your list here and bring up anything you wanna discuss with them. Or same goes for a friend. Or even you can create an extra nested list here within the list in agendas called work. And then whenever you're at work and you wanna easily find you know, your agenda with a certain colleague, anything you wanna ask or talk to them about, you can also add that in here. Another example could be for individual meetings that you may attend, even one-off meetings. You can set the agenda of talking points you wanna bring up there in a specific dedicated agendas list. You don't have to do it that way, but if you really integrate the system, you will have a lot of you know, people in here, a lot of meetings that you may want to have separate lists for. So therefore the board view may become a bit cluttered if you only decide to use it that way, which is why I don't. So actually the agendas list on its own 
is completely empty, but that's okay. It just serves as kind of a category for the underlying list. Next up, we have the not now list. This is also known as the someday maybe list if you use GTD. And this is basically your incubation list. In other words, just items you've decided to postpone without a new date specifically, but you do want to keep it in your view because you may action on it later. So this can be like a bucket list. And here again, you can also decide to add an additional project below. And it could be a separate list of maybe uh, travels you want uh, to make. So you create a travels list. And now it's, I accidentally put it under agendas, here we go. You can just move it like that under the not now list. And now it's a separate category there. So it's very easy to use just by right clicking and adding a project below or even above if that's what you need to do. And lastly, we have the routines list. So things like taking out the trash, right? You need to do that. Well, I need to do that every week. So for example, here, I told the system to remind me to do that every Tuesday. In other words, prompt me to do it every Tuesday. It is a task that I can, I need to complete only on that specific day. So uh, that's why it's in this particular list. You can also set up a monthly item here. Let's say you have a monthly budget for your personal finances. I am reminded to update it every 31st of of any given month, you can set that up as such by just typing it. It recognizes what you're typing and it works really neatly. Or you can set it up manually here by clicking on it. Another example could be a family list within the routines. Again, using the board view here, let's say I want to call my mother every Sunday. Again, this is a recurring item that takes place every single Sunday and I can complete it, but I can also postpone it if it's overdue and then it will show up again the next Sunday. So this is a very easy way to manage most of the things that are, so to speak, on the ground level and, you know, allow you to manage your day-to-day -day life in a very efficient and effective way. A key thing to remember about organizing is that while I do recommend you set it up in the way that I've shown, everybody's different. So you may want to tweak it to your own personal preferences, right? Maybe you want to organize your routines differently, use separate boards where I use separate lists. That's all up to you. This video intended to show what's possible, not to tell you exactly what to do. So if you're ready to get to what I would argue is the most difficult portion of the course, then click on the next video where we'll learn how to actually process items from the inbox into those new lists that we've created here.